Okay, good morning IED and welcome to the clock project. In this project we're going to use tolerances and you are all going to design your very own 3D printed clocks. So let's go ahead and get started. There's a number of things we're going to want to do before we even begin our design. And the very first is familiarizing yourself with the requirements on the design brief. So hopefully you've looked at it. If you haven't, I'm going to go over it with you briefly so that you have an understanding of the expectations of this project. So very first of all, you have to design your clock to fit within a 5.7 by 5.7 by 1.5 inch volume. And the reason why is that the printer can only print in up to these dimensions. At least for now, we're going to say that. So if it's not within these, this range of values, 5.7 by 5.7 by 1.5, your clock will not print properly. And trust me, this is enough material to build whatever or most clock ideas that you want. If you feel strongly that you need additional space or additional volume to design your clock and it goes beyond these this restriction, just let me know and I'm sure that we can work it out. Okay, so that's the first thing. The next is a minimum of five parts. And those five parts are gonna be broken down into a few things. They're gonna be broken down into your main clock body, which is gonna be one of the parts. You're gonna have two additional parts that you design that are going to be your hour hand and the minute hand of your clock. And then you're gonna have two additional parts that are going to probably be things that you like kind of pop into your clock. And I'm gonna show you that in a future video of what I mean by things that pop into your clock. And if you have all of these, you have five parts and your clock is complete. Now, that being said, we must use tolerances wherever possible. So when designing your clock or when putting in your clock mechanism into your clock, you're going to want to use tolerances, which we've already kind of talked about a little in class, um, to design it properly. And I'm also going to show you again in these videos how to set up tolerances in Inventor, so you'll be able to incorporate them. For your clock mechanism, they kind of look like these. You're going to be given one of these clock mechanisms, most likely this one up here, and you're going to have to design your main clock body around it. Okay, so back over here. We're going to need to have at least two colors within your clock. It's going to take at least two prints. So maybe your main clock is blue, you can make the arms yellow, and you can make the rest of the clock yellow. But you're going to need at least two colors to kind of create like a popping effect or a nice design effect that you can't traditionally get with a single colored design. So by having multiple colors, you're going to have a much nicer looking clock if you def if you design it correctly. Okay, so at least two colors, which will end up being at least two prints. And the last but not least, and probably the most important, you're only going to get a single chance to print out your clock body. We have over 50 IED students, but only a handful of printers. So you can't just keep printing out your main clock body because one, each clock is going to take about 10 hours to print. And two, it takes up a lot of resources and we have a finite amount of resources we can use. So the other parts, the smaller parts of your clock, we can print out several times. That's not an issue, but your main clock body, you can only print once. So make sure you have your dimensions correctly and have everything dimensioned correctly so that your final clock ends up being the result that you would like it to be. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look over here. What I'd like you to do first in this project is I would like you to open up your engineering notebooks and then I'd like you to draw out the following sketch. And if your clock looks slightly different from this, what I was trying to represent here was a rough sketch of both the front and the side of the clock face. So go ahead and draw that out. And once you draw that out, you're going to have to use a tool known as dial calipers to measure out the different components of the clock. Now, I know a lot of you are coming into this class and you're familiar with how to use dial calipers. If you're not, either watch my short video tutorial on how to use calipers or just ask me. And if I'm available, I will show you 
how to use the calipers, and then once you have the hang of it, you are more than welcome to continue on with the project. Okay, but you're going to use these dial calipers to measure out the different components of the clock. So what dimensions do we need? We need the dimension of how long this is, you know, the height as well as the width. We need dimension of this, dimension of how long that goes for. We're going to probably need the dimension of the diameter of this circle as well as the dimensions of the different components here. So you want to try to get as many dimensions as possible. You know, even the diameters of these, if you can measure those out, that's the more information you have, the more prepared you're going to be for this. So measure things out. Also remember that everyone's clock is different because this is a cheaper manufacturing process. You're going to have variation among your clocks. So what I'd recommend is not only measuring the clock from like here to here, when you're measuring out the, the width of it, but measure it at the bottom and also measure it at the top. And if you have multiple measurements, you're going to want to stick with the bigger one. The bigger one is the dimension you want. And if you stick with that, your clock is probably going to fit where it needs to fit in. So collect those dimensions. And once you feel confident in your dimensions, then we can start designing the clock in Inventor. So go ahead, open up Inventor, and we're going to start a new part file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new part. And what I recommend doing first is starting with the area that you have. So I'm going to start a 2D sketch, click on one of my planes, and I'm going to draw out a rectangle. And this rectangle is going to be a 5.7 by 5.7 inch rectangle. Okay. And the reason I did this is I know now that anything I design that fits within here will work with the 3D printers. I won't have to do any additional scaling except for that small thing we have to do with the printers. But I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch. I'm going to also extrude out my clock. Let's go ahead and say 1.3 inches. And you can extrude it more or less. It's up to you. Just remember that you have up to 1.5 inches to work with. But I'm just doing this right now because I don't really want like a super thick clock. So 1.3 inches is going to be my starting point. Okay. We got a pretty nice block over here. And what we're probably going to do is start a sketch now on one of the sides. And now what we drew in our paint file, we're going to start recreating that on the back of our clock. So I'm going to make up dimensions. Do not take my dimensions, you're going to want to incorporate your dimensions when I'm talking about this. So let's start with the overall main clock. This is my overall main clock. I have it measured at 2.15 inches and 2.15 inches. So whatever your main clock is, measure that out, pause the video and type those in. Okay. This is obviously not centered. And I know sometimes people will be like, oh, it looks centered, but you want to make sure it's perfectly centered. And the best way to do that is to remember that this entire thing is 5.7 inches. So if I did 5.7 inches minus 2.15 inches, and then I divided it by two so that the area here is even to the area here, then I'm going to get the dimension of how far this edge is from this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a calculator real quick. And let's go ahead and say 5.7 minus 2.15 enters 3.55 divided by 2 is 1.775 for my clock. So over here to over here with the dimension tool will be 1.755. And it's going to be the same on this side as well. Okay, so my clock right now is perfectly centered. And you're going to want to make sure that your clock is centered as well. So go ahead, take a second and set that up. Once you've done that, we're going to also want to add the circle over here, which is going to go all the way through the clock to the other side. 
So I'm going to put it here and I'm going to say that the dimension when I measured mine out was probably maybe about 0.5 inches. Remember, my dimensions might vary from yours, so don't think yours is 0.5 just because I wrote mine. Stick with your dimension. And we're also going to center this. So let's go ahead. And before the, we do that, let's go ahead and add tolerances to these components. So anyway, that's going to conclude this part. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add in those tolerances. Okay, guys. I'll see you later. Peace.